forget the frost, the fog and the cup. For these Leeds fans today, only the league matters. And they've come from Castleford to support Yorkshire's other title hope. It's the battle of the top tykes on the terraces and on the field where Graham Stedman's in sparkling form for Cass. Four tries last week. The omens aren't quite so good for Leeds. Gary Schofield, the man at the centre of everything for them, on the same Headingley pitch 24 hours earlier, was carried out of the game for two months with a fractured cheekbone. The Leeds manager, Doug Lawton, weighed up the options for another player number six. Craig Innes, David Creaser, Bobby Goulding, he came to a swift decision. The jersey that everyone in rugby league associates automatically with Gary Schofield goes today to David Creaser. They're used to seeing his defensive qualities at Headingley. Today, he has to be the pivot for the Leeds attack. He can do it. The second time that I've played six this year when I deputised for Gary against Featherston, but uh, I'm looking forward to it. And your form at the moment is probably as good as it's been for a long time. Yes, uh, it goes with the team. The team's been playing well, and uh, you know I've been playing well. You know, as part of that side. And... Well, if he can steer Leeds to victory, they'll be second, a point behind Wigan with a game in hand. But if Castleford win, they'd be level on points with Leeds and still in the hunt. And while Leeds have injury worries, Cass are delighted to have Richie Blackmore fit again, the New Zealander playing his first league match in 92, after proving his shoulder had fully recovered with a try in last week's 50-point romp against Trafford in the Cup. Today will be very different. Yeah, well, um, you know, Leeds are on the top of the competition at the moment, so we expect to have a hard game and it should be a good game. Two changes in the cast team. John Ray plays his second game of the season on the right wing in place of Simon Middleton. Mike Ford is back after the leg injury which kept him out last week, so Tony Smith reverts to sub. And standoff Grant Anderson has shaken off the calf trouble which forced him off the field against Trafford. And what an occasion for the former New Zealand All Black Craig Innes to make his league debut for Leeds after an impressive start in the Cup last week. His centre partner is Simon Irving, back after missing that Cup victory over Rydale York and taking over the goal kicking from John Gallagher, who's replaced by Phil Ford on the right wing. The only other change is in the pack, Paul Dixon moving up from sub to press his claims for a Great Britain jersey. Well, later we've two David and Goliath occasions in the Cup, Scarborough playing Bradford and Rochdale against Hull, plus the jigsaw that's got you all beaten so far. But now let's enjoy this all Yorkshire Headingley occasion in the company of David Watkins and John Hell. In many ways, this is regarded as the match of the season at Headingley. Leeds against Castleford. It's got a ring about it, hasn't it? And Merv Borman Edwards spills the first high kick right under his own post, but he did have the sense to turn around and knock the ball backwards. David Watkins, we always get a bit of a tingle, don't we, for matches like this one? It certainly does, and uh, Leeds without Schofield and uh, Hanley, of course, now one has to see how they can fare, because it's going to be tough there this afternoon, and we are looking forward to it. It was a nervous start by Edwards, but Leeds have been awarded the first penalty of the match, given by referee Stuart Cummings from Widnes. He was in charge of the Scrumdale match the other week at Odsall, and it was Bradford against Wigan, so he's come across the Pennines again. And again, the undersoil heating has played its part here at Headingley. So we've got a match without question on a day when uh, many others were in doubt. This one never was. Here's Sean Wayne for Leeds on the halfway line. And Devorty had made the run on the left and didn't think he was going to get the pass, I imagine. That was a planned move that certainly didn't come off. And it's given Castleford the ball back with Lee Crooks. The crowd... Expects so much from Crooks, the Castleford fans, certainly. And the ball inside is for Kettridge. Ford along the line, now it's Grant Anderson, and Anderson making a half break. He's come through OK after doubts about his fitness with the calf injury sustained here in the match against Trafford Borough last week. On the last tackle, Crooks must hoist it. And in fact, it came back up for Neil and is grabbed for Leeds. Well, I've no doubt, David, that both coaches will have been thinking long and hard about this match uh, during the week. They'll have been studying videos, they'll have been trying to get their players in the right frame of mind, won't they? 
They certainly will. Uh, both sides play uh, good, attractive rugby. Defence sometimes has been prone on either side to let them down. It'll be interesting today to see how they cope both sides in defence, as well as we know they can play in attack. There's a bit of a misunderstanding there, and that was interesting because Bobby Gilding ran straight into David Creaser, so perhaps the numbers seven and six haven't quite got it worked out yet. Well, that's always going to be a bit of a problem, but uh, they are two players uh, who have tons of experience, and one would assume that they would soon get together. It's a slightly uh, soft surface, and uh, players are having difficulty putting moves together at the moment. Ford got the ball for Leeds, and now O'Neill in the scrum cap. And what a good acquisition he's proved against all the odds. Many people thought that it was a strange signing, but he's turned out to be a revelation. Well, he has, because he's such an inspiration to other people, his tackling and his backing up, and he's always there and thereabouts. And that makes him such an important figure in this Leeds side. It's the first time Leeds have got close to the castle at 25. Looked a little high, but the referee has allowed play to continue. And they move the ball right from Goulding. It wasn't an easy one to take for Creaser, but he took it. And here is Simon Irving, restored in the three-quarter line at the expense of John Gallagher. And presumably restored to the kicking role as well. Goulding, now he'll kick. And this is dangerous, and Castleford's Graham Stedman comes for it. I don't think he'll get there, and the ball comes back, and Leeds might just catch Castleford out here if they can move it swiftly along the ranks. Creaser, Phil Ford, he's got a man outside him. Ford chips ahead and goes for the touchdown, and uh, it's just knocked out by David Nelson. Intelligent play by Ford, though. It was intelligent play, but uh, letting the ball bounce is always deadly. The ball bounced back, and it gave, of course, Leeds possession. The ball didn't come back at all. No one went for it, a result of which Leeds knocked it back. That long ball out then put pressure on Castleford, but fortunately, despite this good kick through, it worked for Ford quite wasn't quick enough to get to the ball himself. Edwards leads the next raid forward. Leads in such good form at uh, Headingley at the moment. They've run teams ragged in some matches. And yet the feeling here has been that they uh, still haven't quite got it all together as was proved in that Regal Trophy final defeat at the hands of uh, Witness. It's the usual softening up process in the early minutes. Well, it is. Uh, it is noticed that. Crooks goes in, usually can take one or two with him, but he was held then with three-man tackle, and he just goes to show the sort of pressure that he'll be under this afternoon. Bit of room there for Southern Wood and for Mike Ford and Crooks, and that's a lovely ball! And here's Grant Anderson streaking towards the Leeds try line. He's got to get the ball away. He does exactly that to Blackmore. That was good support play. Lively work from uh, Grant Anderson. He's OK. Crooks now will drive it in closer. Falls to the tackle from O'Neill. Nothing wrong with it. Round the shoulder, said the referee, Mr Cummins. Castleford again looked down the left. Anderson squirted the ball away, and then it's kicked into touch by uh, Graham Stedman. But that's the first really devastating bit of running we've seen. Well, it is, it just goes to show what they can do. A superbly timed pass, put Anderson through the through the gap. Let's just watch it, but it was a good pass here. Superb pass, Crooks now pushes it out, takes the man out of play. Anderson comes on on the burst. He now is left, of course, confronted with Morvan Edwards, but a very, very good tackle, but still able to get the ball away to support. We've been saying all oh, the ball put down, and uh, Castleford should have it from here. And we were just going to say that it's a very different occasion to last Sunday when Castleford played Trafford Berra in the Cup, and every indication that this is going to be a very tight affair. That's Bradley, the big Australian, playing in the second row, is supposed to the centre now. Ford will drive them in close. He's got it back again, and chances once more. Graham Stedman's up there, caught on the tackle by David Creaser whose defensive work has never been questioned. And this could be a score. Blackmore, he's got to turn around. He's still about three or four yards short of that Leeds line. It's looking promising, this, for Castleford. Nelson will try and find a way through. And still, Kettridge manages to keep in play. So Castleford spin it along the line. That wasn't a great ball. Oh, intelligent work by Stedman. And brave defending by Edwards under his own posts. That was really good thinking from Graham Stedman, who could have poached the first try. 
Well, what a turnaround this is in Castleford's play now because it's all quick, sharp, passing, good backing up. Even when passes go, Stedman there superbly. That's a good footballer. Didn't want to pick it up, put it forward and nearly scored himself. The referee wants Gary Devorty just to go off for a moment. He's got a cut on the eyebrow, and that means that uh, Leeds will make a change. And on that comes at Steve Malloy. Southern Wood, and that's a dangerous ball to fling out, although John Ray has managed to pick him up, and it's given him a real tilt at the Leeds line. Ray showing his speed, the former rugby union man from West Park, Brown Hope and Morley, having only his second game of this season, and he'll have enjoyed that run. Stedman linking up well again from full-back. He pops up in the line all over the place. He doesn't just stand and wait for the ball to come to him. He certainly doesn't. Uh, he's a player that's obviously got his eyes on a Great Britain spot and uh, his tightening in line is important. Here are a few more with eyes on a Great Britain spot and Sutherwood might just make it all the way. Graham Sutherwood, I think if he'd have realised what was on there, he would have scored. St John Ellis might. Edwards has just got him. Sutherwood really should have scored probably there. I don't think he realised just how open the Leeds line was for him. He hesitated twice. That was Castleford's good chance, and now it's out to the far side, and this will be a score, and guess who's got it? It's Graham Stedman yet again. Superb attacking and counter-attacking, this is what the game has seen early on. Castlewood do a lot of ring, but it's a superb ball outside, only two Leeds defenders, and Graham takes the ball really well, Stedman, and goes over for a first-class try. We're going to run out of uh, adjectives and superlatives for this man. 22 tries now this season, and he is uh, in with a chance of breaking the record for most tries in a season from the full-back position. Someone you well remember, Paul Charlton, holds that record, David, with 33. Well, I've said uh, many times uh, that uh, it is a great position to play in. You can judge your position to come into the line, but this boy really does sniff out chances and half chances and make them into glorious tries. Crooks has kicked a few goals on this ground in his time. He did, of course, have a spell with Leeds. Not a very happy one between his days at Holland here with Castleford now. And this is to make it 6-0 for Cass. And the roar tells you it is 6 0. They've talked about Graham Stedman, how he positions himself well. But it was a superbly long ball out by Anderson here, right over the top. But Stedman on the outside, seeing that the Leeds defence was not clever on that side, went right round the back of them and scores near enough to the force for Cooks to convert. Uh, Gary Duvorty has returned to the fray, so uh, Malloy's gone off again. Crook's always looking to slip the ball away in the tackle, he's always got one eye open. Well, he, he's perfect because he runs in between two men and it means that both have to come in to tackle him and if he can get it away then, of course, he puts the ball on the outside of the man. Edwards seeing a lot of the ball at the moment in the full-back position, almost taken round the throat on that tackle. And I think there might be a penalty awarded certainly here to Leeds, but will any action be taken against the tackler? Can we just see this again? Yep, up high it was, Stedman did catch him upstairs in the throat. Wayne just making it over the 25 line. As Leeds look to get back into the match. Six points down, now Dixon once more, it's a high tackle, this time by Nikau. And again the whistle sounds from referee Cummings, and once more there will be a lecture, this time to Nickow. So two high tackles already. Watching now, he goes in, Dixon. He does take him upstairs, of that there is no doubt. It will really be interesting to see what the referee does. It looks uh, again that the cautionary measure and the penalty are given is the only uh, punishment the player is having. Well, it would be very rude of me not to mention that John Gallagher, the All Black, is uh, Leeds' 16th man today. He helped, of course, make a result last week against Rydale York, kicking eight goals and scoring a try, but disappointed to be left out again today. Well, that sand job has got to be done by someone. And that looks a good kick, it's planted firmly through the middle 
and Leeds do have their first points of the match. Leeds 2, Castleford 6. Well, Goulding had held back there and places a good kick down, but uh, Ray has it in his hands. And now it's Innes who wins the applause of the fans here with that tackle. Craig Innes remember playing only his second game of Rugby League in the first team. Did have a couple of A-team outings. Up the middle comes Keith England. All five feet nine and 14 stones, seven of him. Mike Ford, nice ball, Crooks along the line, Ellis, and Ellis uh, tries to make room to get up the middle and tries to get the ball away for Bradley, but can't because of Bentley's tackle. Nick out. They must halt him, and they've not done, and that's given them another running chance here. And Ketrich takes that chance, and the support up on the outside. Nelson, they looked for a forward pass, and the referee said it was forward as well. But again, they burst holes in the Leeds defence rather easily. Well, that's straight running, and it's very difficult to stop that when you have a man in support down the middle of the field. Unfortunately, the pass went forward and spoilt the whole effort. Just have a look at this, but it's down the middle, either side here. The ball was obviously thrown forward in that situation, which was unfortunate for Casford. Uh, Dougie Lawton's response is to bring on both Roy Powell on the left and Steve Malloy. Devorty has gone away for the second time already, and Sean Wayne has gone away with him. Bentley inside for Powell, and a huge tackle on Powell. Shoulder to shoulder by Keith England, and it's left both of them groggy. Powell's first to his feet, so he's going to be all right. Keith England knows about it as well. Lack of concentration then by Leeds. Uh, that could cause them de cost them dearly. They should have been running onto that ball then. Creaser up the middle. He's not had much chance to show his flair in attack today, David Creaser. Goulding. This time the kick will land nicely for Graham Stedman to start things off. And up the right he comes, and then he gets between two defenders. Superb play for Stedman. Oh, he's taken out by Edwards, and a penalty has been awarded to Leeds already. That's unfortunate for the Castleford fullback, who was showing his footballing brain again. It is, but he runs so straight, he takes on the opposition. He just gets to the fullback, sees this field open space down. Morvan Edwards takes him out, but to no avail, because a penalty had already been awarded to Leeds before the incident. And the two physiotherapists have hardly ever been off the field, and uh, Stuart Walker's back on at the moment to treat David Creaser. Bernadette Scatchard from Castleford's been on on a number of occasions too. Sullenwood with the ball to Ford. Crooks now looking back inside, and this time Anderson, and that ball was OK. That was within rugby league laws. The ball was reversed, as it has to be. Danger now, once more, the chip ahead, St. John Ellis is going for it. If it doesn't go dead, he might score. Now he's an unavailing dive, a dramatic one as well from Ellis, but intelligent play yet again with the kick over the top. Very intelligent play, this is a super kick over the top here of the defence. He knew that there was nobody there and Reedy Goulding was outpaced by St. John Ellis, but it wasn't to be. He's always wearing shoulder pads. Castleford are going to make their first substitution of the match. It'll be Dean Sampson who comes on for Keith England. England certainly left groggy with that tackle, albeit a very good one on Powell. Yes, he, he went down, he didn't get up as uh, quickly as Roy Powell did from that, and uh, I've no doubts at all he's suffering. Creaser also is being helped off now on the halfway line. It's always sad to see a player go off, and David Creaser has had so many injuries over the years. His shoulder has often let, let him down, and one hopes that uh, it's not another bad injury for Leeds, bearing in mind Schofield went off in similar circumstances last week with a depressed fracture of the cheekbone, and Hanley, of course, is out of action too. It's been a frustrating half for Leeds, though. Credit to Cattleford for making it that. Turning the ball back inside here for Cavill Hugh. And now it's Goulding. Leeds still want this score in the half that they've not yet been able to achieve. 
Bentley pulled down. Last tackle. Watch for the Goulding kick. Here it comes. And uh, danger for Castleford in the closing seconds of the half, and there might still be a score. No, Ford couldn't collect it. Irving did, however. But the uh, knock-on is given... Uh, not a knock-on, it's a handover. I'm amazed at Castleford, really. Every time Goulding has put a kick in the air, no-one has really gone for the ball, and nearly every time Leeds have got it, and I would have thought Darrell van der Vel at half-time would most certainly say, somebody's got to shout my ball and take it. But up the middle goes Lee Crooks again, and if he's got support either side of him, there could yet be a score for Castleford in this half. Ford decided to hold on. The chance is probably gone now, but still encouragement for Castleford, given them by Summerwood now. Nickow, Ellis goes, Ellis will look to get the ball out. Still St. John Ellis, and he's given John Ray a scoring chance, so he puts the ball down. Was it not behind him? No, it was a knock-on, and what a disappointment for John Ray. He could have become a hero at that moment. Castleford have opened up the defence again by coming down the middle of the field. Southernwood has taken it now from acting halfback, and his objective is to move it out wide. St. John Ellis does all the work here because he steps around John Bentley. Now he races for the line and draws Morgan Edwards. It's a super pass in changing the ball over from left to right hand. Ray puts it down. Ellis had done everything right. Ray did the one thing he had to do wrong. But uh, now Maskell loses it, and that's given Castleford yet another chance with Kettridge, and uh, surely that hooter must be coming shortly, Leeds will certainly want it from this position at the moment, Castleford still looking to add to their one try, they won't uh, be able to do that though, because it is half-time here at Headingley, a good half indeed for Castleford, who deserve their interval lead of six points to two. So Graham Stedman, the try-scorer, going away for a breather, but Leeds have a lot to do in the second half. Let's hear from their captain, Gary Schofield, with Nick. Gary, I know it's difficult for you to comment on specifically, but Leeds are missing Gary Schofield, aren't they? Uh, well, I think it's a bit of a tight game, and uh, he's been playing the forwards at the moment, so hopefully now you know, we'll get a bit wider and start to cast around a little bit and get some more points on the board. What problems are you going to have now for the fact that you've lost another standoff? It is a bit of a problem, and uh, same with Craig, and he's just playing there, and obviously new to the game. You know, I'm sure that we can come up with a game plan the second half to get the two points. Right, thanks very much indeed, John. It's all going to make for a very interesting second half. Leeds are only on the scoreboard, courtesy of a Simon Irving penalty goal. Castleford have a Graham Stedman try and a Lee Crooks goal to show for their efforts. It's Leeds 2, Castleford 6, and we're back after the break. Hello again from Headingley, where it's Leeds 2, Castleford 6, and I'm sure Darrell van der Velde will have told the players he's very proud of them and their performance in this first half. All coaches love it when they prevent the opposition team scoring a try. What's going to happen in the second half, though? We can get a view from the Castleford dressing room. Mick Morgan is with Nick. Are you pleased at half-time? Well, 6-2, uh, but it should have been a lot more, so we've got to start taking his chances this half. We've kicked defence as we've had it in the first half, should be no problem. You have been very nice and tight, haven't you? Yeah, we've defended very well. Uh, as I say, we've got to start taking more chances, but uh, obviously they've been a bit of win this half, but I'm confident our defence can cope. Nick, thanks very much, Anid. I suspect we're in for a very tense 40 minutes. John? And Mick Morgan is right. I mean, it could well have been something like 18-2 if Castleford had taken all their chances. There was one forward pass given, which looked a little bit dubious. Oh, and, uh, that's not the start that Castleford were looking for for the start of the second half. Let's have a look at the first half details. Uh, Leeds taking the scrums 6-3. to three. Against the head, neither won by a hooker. Uh, the penalties, well, Leeds have conceded four so far. Castleford seven. And they've also made ten handling errors to Leeds' is six. But David Leeds could well have been out of the game by now. Well, that's what's interesting. The coach now can go into the dressing room. He has to be very positive and he has to really be analytical about what's happened in the first half and to put it right. Let's see if Leeds can put it right by moving the ball out wide and creating a little more space for themselves. And coming onto the ball. They've not really come onto the ball in typical Leeds style. Bentley does here. Typically the forwards, we've not seen much of the Leeds pack. Here's Roy Powell, he might make a difference in this second half. He's got a couple of tries to his name this season. Quite prolific by Roy standards. Goulding switches it along the line and it's gone to ground. And that's again not the start that they were looking for. Put down there by Steve Malloy. 
Now, what an onus on Craig Innes in only his second game for Leeds. He's going to be at uh, standoff half, we imagine, or maybe Devorty is still. It's uh, not always possible to see. But there's some onus on Innes. Well, there isn't, there isn't really. He's going to play in a standoff position, which he will be alien to him in this game. But perhaps the pressure won't be on him as much to perform as well because people will be a little more patient. It'll be interesting to see. He is a strong direct runner and whether or not he'll share that responsibility now with Gary Devorty. And Crooks. Well, was that a knock on by Nico? The referee said no. Uh, the touch judge over on this side signaled to the referee and he now does give the scrum. That was good communication then between touch judge and referee and he's brought it back for an obvious knock-on. And given Leeds a real chance to hunt their try. It would change the complexion of the game, I'm sure, if Leeds could get a score early in this half. They haven't got one as yet, but now here is Innes. He looks to go right, goes left, in fact. Straightens up Craig Innes. And caught by the ankle. Just showing how capable he can be. His last game, believe it or not, was of Rugby Union, was on New Year's Day as a prop forward. So he's regarded as a strong man. Dixon's got it out this time. Still no way through. Better moments for Leeds, though. They're sniffing this try out as it's spun along. Bentley might break the line. Bentley still here. Oh, he puts it down. Nelson grabs it gratefully. Well, the opening minutes of this half have been riddled with errors and uh, it saved uh, both sides bacon, it stopped Leeds scoring and it saved Castleford having tries scored against them. Well, that's what happens when you have a ten-minute breather. The, game, the players are into the rhythm of the match and then sometimes they don't want to break. That was all right because he hadn't been grounded and got the ball away for Nelson and Castleford have made five or six extra yards they didn't expect. Well, Cass's defence has been helped a little bit by the insistency in Leeds in going down the middle. They really do want it called out. John Bentley was calling, Simon Irvin was calling for it out wide because they feel that they have an opportunity to run at the opposition out wide. <laughs> well, that one didn't he as well from Hugh and Devorty, Keith England. He seems to be a bit of a marked man today. They ask Stedman to clear the lines with a straight kick upfield and it gives Edwards a straightforward run at it. A Kiwi fullback. Loves basketball and gridiron as well. I think all these chaps like physical contact sports. And they're talking of physical contact. That was Messrs O'Neill and Bradley saying hello to one another. Badly put down by Devorty. And there's a number of Leeds players today who are simply not playing up to scratch. A low scoring gate so far, but that's not to say it hasn't been full of excitement and good running and thinking, and it has, and here's Stedman, oh, just caught by the big toe by Malloy. Otherwise he might well have been on his way yet again. Blackmore, not seen much of the Kiwi today. But uh, again, good moments for Castleford as Sonnenwood takes them closer, Nickow slips the ball away, here's Bradley, and Graham Bradley, no ball and a couple of yards out, he just couldn't squeeze the pass out, Anderson was asking for it, pleading for it. Castleford look for a try now, Sonnenwood put down by Ford, and that's really... Oh, no, it's knocked back and they must score! The referee says that that is a try, does he? No, he's now changed his mind. Oof, dear me, any lead supporters there? Were, their hearts were flapping, I'm sure, because he'd waved play on, and then when Crooks went over the line, said no try. It wasn't a good decision, really. I mean, the ball went back, and the referee did wave play on. Look, wave play on. And suddenly, as soon as the gap was opened up for Crooks to get in, he called them back and gave a scrum. That one is baffling, I must say. But if Castleford go on to lose this game, will they rue these chances? Will they just? Uh, but they are playing very well because they're very committed. They're running onto the ball at pace, and uh, you can see it there every time. It's hard to bring a man down. Graham Stedman runs straight at the defence, and they can slip men because they are really going forward at speed. Ennis not picked up. It is now by Ford, and round he goes. Phil Ford pounded back into his own half. Now Devorta. This is Innes once more getting involved. They might stretch them here, they might just do it. O'Neill coming back inside as he had to do. Oh. 
took half the pack to hold him up. Now it's Goulding thinking of the kick. Falling, and this will be the last tackle. Oof, Devorty nearly spilled it, and then by the time he does get a kick in, it's not very productive, really. And Stedman elusive. Stedman up the middle. Still Stedman, and he's got a long, long way to go, but Stedman is capable. Ford might just get him. Still it's Stedman. He's only got Devorty now. Oh, it's going to be the tie of the season! Quite sensational from Graham Stedman. He's got 100 yards. I've seen great tries. I don't think I've seen many better than that. He picks up a loose ball, but it's his direct running again. He takes on the defence in the heart of it. He comes on the outside. Now Ford is coming back for him as well. Morgan Edwards is coming over. Did he impede Ford? Yes, he did. That really took Ford out of it. Devorty had no chance at all. What a try, and really has brought the roof down here. Thunderous applause around Headingley for Graham Stedman. He's the man in the back of your picture, but he's very much in the forefront of our minds. Surely he's got to be Great Britain's number one on this form. I don't think anybody can ignore him. Uh, you saw him play against a weaker opposition last week, and uh, he was so sharp then. But uh, this is a game today with a vastly different opposition. has to keep his composure oh he's kept it to go with a try a matchless kick and it's Castleford leading by 12 points to two and who could deny them after a try and a goal like that the ball was put down into the hard defense Stedman picked it up with no one there but it was his direct run in look how he runs the determination says it all in his face Morgan Edwards came across impeded Ford who was probably the quickest man on the lead side but really it was again he knew now he was going to get there but look at it in the face aggression commitment says it all and the Leeds response is to be to bring back on David Crease at number six there well, I need something from him now. Rip-roaring match, but uh, Castleford holding most of the aces in the first hour. Uh, have they got an ace at full-back? Uh, that might find a very good touch. Well, could hardly have been better, could it? Bobby Goulding pumps leads forward to within a few yards of the cast line. He gets a pat on the back from Innes. If ever Leeds needed a score, it was now. But uh, they don't have the put-in. I still think that that is a bad law in rugby league. I think uh, a kick like that should be rewarded with uh, head and ball to the attacking side. I agree with that wholeheartedly. Stedman will get the ball away for Crooks, who will take it willingly and come on up the middle. He wants support as well, inside he finds it from Southernwood, but it's a knock on by the little hooker. His awareness uh, in those situations is superb, is Lee Crooks. He, he draws it in, he sees that people aren't coming from him, and he puts that extra spurt into his uh, run and just moves away from people and then draws them all in and gets rid of the ball. There's not many better in the game at doing that, drawing the people in and then uh, delivering the pass at the right time. Now it's Leeds who've got to do that, increase their might. Bentley wants it. Fine tackle on him by Nelson. He didn't have much time to stop him there. Bentley's copped one in the head. Goes away uncomplainingly. Well, that was the first time a player has come onto the ball at speed in this uh, half, really. O'Neill now has Creaser moving towards the cast line. The ball inside isn't good. It's uh, fallen on gratefully by Anderson. And yet again, the chance has gone. The Leeds just haven't shown it on attack at all today. They haven't. They've been rather hesitant, and uh, it's, it's really throwing out a, a life-saving pass now and again, which has not gone to hand or more often not gone to ground. Only fair to say, David, uh, how crippled they are without two of the greatest players in the world, of course, Ellery Hanley and Gary Schofield, both sitting it out at the moment. 
John, we said at the top of the programme, it is difficult when they lose two players of that quality, really. How are you going to put the game together again? But there are a lot of other good players, and we saw in the first half Bobby Goulding taking a little more responsibility on himself. And he really has got to do now because they need some inspiration to score points. Now, there was a decision for Bobby Goulding to make. His team are ten points in arrear. They've been awarded a penalty. Should they run it? Should they kick it? The decision is to go for goal. Simon Irving then with a penalty opportunity. He's taken one so far. And he's taken two. And Leeds have four points now. But they're still eight points adrift. of thinking still for Dougie Lawton at the back Gary Schofield still looking rather disconsolate in front of him and John Gallagher probably pondering his holidays in Shrewsbury Castleford make a late substitute and it's again Samson who comes on for the closing moments of the game in place of Bradley Creaser and Innes Irving can't hold it and uh, there was a knock on. Well, Craig Innes has uh, had another introduction to rugby league today. He got a, an easy one in many ways against Rydale York. This has been a very different occasion. It has been a different occasion. He hasn't been helped too much by some of his teammates because they haven't had the really the commitment and a greater purpose which they have to require in matches of this nature. Cass seems to have had it all. And there are three minutes left in which to hold on to this lead as Nelson makes a relieving run and they should uh, take play inside the leads half from this play the ball Nikau does that and Nikau's on a storming run he's got support inside Tony Smith it's going to be a score and Nelson clinches a famous Castleford victory at Headingley that's done it In this move, we've seen all that Cass have done afternoon. Now, Reed, Craig Innes now doesn't know whether to wait for him or come for him, and that was fatal because the gap opened up. It was then good backing up as well. The ball comes across now right to the wing, and my gosh, it's opened up the whole of the defence and really put him in for a superb try. Nelson got a couple of tries here against Trafford Berra seven days ago. I'll tell you what, I bet he enjoyed this one more. The goal from Crooks seals Castleford's day of success at Headingley. 18 points to four, and it's no more than they deserve. Nikai goes on the outside. Now, it's really the hesitant needs defence again. Really, Powell Pop should have really made lunges at him. He didn't. The ball was moved back inside. This is where Nelson appears. He had the good sense to come back on the inside, and a pause under the sticks. As play restarts, we know that that try has brought up the century for Castleford this season, and what a good one to do it with. A memorable score. And a memorable day as well for Castleford's fans. They've won here only six times since the war, so this is going to be win number seven. Leeds will still want a score of their own. I don't like it when they're not going to try at all in 80 minutes play. But their efforts have gone unrewarded so far. And their efforts have been totally unrewarded and Castleford Arms punched the air in jubilation. A notable triumph for them and it's the Castleford fans who will be going home very happy indeed. And Graham Stedman a memorable performance from him, certainly a memorable second try, and that was good enough to really put the cap on a marvellous win for Castleford by 18 points to four. Nobody will have enjoyed this success more than Castleford's captain, Lee Crooks. Congratulations, a wonderful team performance there. Yeah, tremendous performance by the lads, Nick. Um, we knew that we had to be, you know, play very well to come to Leeds and win. We desperately needed two points to keep us in the championship race, and uh, you know we've got them from um, excellent preparation during the week and a tremendous performance on the day.
David, what do you think was the difference between the two sides today? Castlewood displayed a, a well-organised defence, greater purpose and awareness, and of course they had a player possessing so much individual skill and a try by Graham Steadman that would have graced any game of rugby, no matter what court throughout the world. Absolutely, there are the bare facts then. Castlewood winning 18-4, Leeds didn't manage a try, just two penalties from Simon Irving. There were those two tries from Graham Steadman and one from David Nelson, accompanied by three goals from Lee Crooks. And all this means that Castlewood now move up alongside Leeds on the 23-point mark. They stay fourth because of an inferior points difference. What chance of the championship now that you've moved up level with Leeds? Well, it's early doors yet. We're, we're on a good roll. Since the turn of the new year, we've only uh, dropped one point. That was at Trinity. So, uh, obviously, it's a case of keeping the momentum going and uh, keep the points in the bag. And uh, who knows, at the end of the season, it might be Castleford at the top. I certainly hope it is. Have you ever scored a better try than your second one here today? Uh, when I was a bit younger at York, I've scored one or two full lengths, but uh, it's been quite a while since I've scored uh, one similar to that. I really enjoyed it. I was going to say, I don't know about talking us through, it was such a long, it must have seemed an awful long way to go. Yeah, it certainly was when I saw Gary, uh, Gary Diverty on my right, and uh, I seemed to be treading water for the last 20, 20 metres, but that extra bit of training, what I've been doing, has uh, paid off. You know, it's the first time I've ever beaten Leeds, and um, I just couldn't hold myself back. <laughs> I think you got a bit of stick from the lads for the way you celebrated, yeah, did you? Yeah, I got a lot of stick off of me, yeah. And I got a bit of stick off boss as well. <laughs> what did he say to you? No, Dad all said, um, good try. He said I took it well. But um, it's the first time I've ever beaten Leeds. And with me being a Leeds lad, you know, it's special. It doesn't matter what sport you're playing, you know, you have your, your ups and you have your downs. And, um, you know, I'm sure that we'll come out next week um, even more determined to do well. How do you feel you have settled generally? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with the way things are going, you know, at the moment. Today was, you know, a disappointment. But, uh, like we say, you know, you have your ups and downs. And, um, but I'm enjoying the scene and enjoying playing at Leeds. And, you know, a good bunch of guys. And it's, uh, it's been great. And the best thing possible now, you've got a big cup tie coming up against St Helens. Well, that's right. You know, we, we didn't have the best start today. But um, I'm sure we'll go out there next week um, even more determined to do well. The statistics behind the scoreline show that Leeds came out on top in the scrums 15-10. They also achieved that rare event of healing one against the head. Again, the penalty count makes interesting reading. Leeds' superior discipline this season meant a low concession of just five, whereas Castleford infringed on 11 occasions. A lot of errors this week. Leeds put the ball to ground 15 times. Castleford were guilty of 18 mistakes. Challenge Cup history was made at Tatters Field as Doncaster became the first third division team to knock out first division opponents. Audley Pennant taking Martin Rouse's pass for the first try as Swinton's misery in the league was transferred to the cup. Adrift at the bottom of the first division, the Manchester team were all at sea in the mud as Dick Jazovic became the second former Bradford player to score. Late on, the home victory was sealed when Swinton's desperate passing was intercepted by Stephen Rouse and on his club's greatest day, no one was going to catch him, not even in these energy-sapping conditions. After this, not even Swinton's late try worried the team turned round by the league's youngest coach, Jeff Morris, and the celebrations at the end were well earned. Doncaster 14, Swinton 4. In the big match at Norton Park, Paul Bishop's try straight from a scrum set St Helens on the road to victory. Man of the match, Sean Edwards, who's played in all Wigan's 21 games unbeaten in the Cup, scored their first try of four at Salford. And at 2nd Division Rochdale, 1st Division Hull had a real struggle. Sleight of hand between Lee Jackson, David Ronson and try scorer Richard Gay gave Hull just the start they wanted. And when Aussie Peter Spring came up with the sort of barging run that used to be the trademark of his coach Noel Cleal to lay on a score for winger Neil Turner, the early birds seemed to be well on their way. Colin Whitfield did land a penalty for Hornets, but Hull were coasting it when a nice switch of play led to Gay's second try from full back. Little sign of a Hornets recovery until a nifty bit of work from Australian Brett Clark, who followed his own kick to pounce, and it was 14-8 at half time. Hull's nerves just started to jangle when Bob Marsden caught them napping at a play the ball. It left a simple conversion for Colin Whitfield, and it's 14 apiece. Hull did settle slightly when Greg Mackey's basketball-style pass sent Paul Eastwood slithering over. And they were positively beaming once again. Hull coming out with the best try of the match by far. Gay playing a considerable part before sending Paul Harrison herring in between the posts. 
and that stretched Hull into a healthy lead, surely home if not quite dry. Don't you believe it, Rochdale's never say die approach got them on the try sheet again. Brian Garrity led the chase, and when the ball got hacked on, it was another Rochdale man, Martin Hall, who was quickest on the next dash. Good cup tie became an excellent one, especially for Richard Gay when he dived successfully onto Mackey's up and under. But Rochdale wouldn't lie down. And when big Bob Eccles drove them forward again, Hull couldn't lay a finger on the ball, Marsden did for his second try. And Whitfield's simple enough kick got us back to square one, 28 all. Just when it looked as if a replay would be necessary, Hull found their match winner. Mackey's long ball prized Rochdale open. Steve McNamara split them even further. And Eastwood, in his first game for seven weeks, was submerged by triumphant fans after clinching Hull's place in the next round by 32 points to 28. In the day's only replay, Wayne Race ensured another one. His try a minute from time crowned Keithley's fight back against Barrow. There was more rugby league history at the McCain Stadium, Scarborough's first ever Challenge Cup match, and indeed the game we'd planned to feature on Scrum Down last week before the frost set in. But none of this impressed Bradford. This is Tony Marchand's second try and Northern's fifth to leave them out of sight going into the second half. Marchand, a former Great Britain international, has worn several different shirts this season, but he's a dangerous customer in any position. And from David Hobbs' pass, he raced in to complete his hat-trick. Scarborough were outclassed inevitably, losing the ball this time and being severely punished. Paul Medley with the midfield burst, taking out a man. Marchand takes it on, and on the outside, Gerald Cordell has too much pace for the cover, the first of his two tries. And how about this for handling from the Northern Pack? Brian Noble sending in man of the match Carl Fairbank, celebrating his not guilty verdict of this week's disciplinary appeal following his sending off at Castleford. Then the best try of the match, faultless handling of a ball despite the muddy conditions, Marchant again in the thick of it, and Medley, aided admittedly by some dispirited tackling, did the rest on his own. Bradford had all their ten tries on the board by the time Scarborough finally managed one of their own, from the former Castleford and Great Britain under-21 forward Kenny Hill. Scarborough 4, Bradford 52. So the full results from the Silk Cut Challenge Cup first round, Doncaster 14, Swinton 4. Highfield 12, London Crusaders 12. Oldham against Warrington, match postponed until tomorrow. Rochdale 28, Hull 32. Salford 6, Wigan 22. Scarborough 4, Bradford 52. Widnes 2, St Helens 10. In the first round replay, Keithley 14, Barrow 14. They'll try again at Witness on Tuesday at 8 o'clock. So the second round draw is much clearer tonight. Dewsbury against Featherstone. Halifax play Doncaster. Keithley or Barrow will meet Bradford. Leeds against St Helens, that's on Saturday. The other tie's on Sunday. Wigan against Oldham or Warrington. Sheffield against Hull. Workington against Highfield or London Crusaders and Hunslet have the unenviable task on today's evidence of playing Castleford. In Division 2 today, Andy Ruane's drop goal is the difference as Lee win a thriller to go top. There's the result, the only match played in this division, Lee 19, Carlisle 18. Lee overtaking Sheffield at the top, but they have played a game more. Third place London Crusaders are now seven points behind the top two. In Division 3, Bramley's Steve Carroll with five goals extends the league's longest consecutive scoring sequence to 23 matches. Just three results, Batley 40, Trafford Borough nil, a hat-trick from the Australian Andy Hendricks. Huddersfield 46, Chorley 8, three tries for Cocker, two for Kebby, Nottingham 4, Bramley 34. So Bramley stay top, but Huddersfield in second place and Dewsbury in third have games in hand. Batley are up one position to fifth. Well, now the scrum down jigsaw, and this chap is the first to go into a third week. Lots more ideas from you this week, all wrong, so here's some more pieces. Remember, it's a current rugby league personality, and the prize is an afternoon behind the scenes with us here on the scrum down team. Try a guess if you're not sure, and send it to Scrum Down Competition, Yorkshire Television, Kirkstall Road, Leeds, LS3, 1JS. Give it to you once more, Scrum Down Competition, Yorkshire Television, Kirkstall Road, Leeds, LS3, 
JS. And if it's still not solved, there'll be more pieces next week when we're into the second round of the Challenge Cup. Dewsbury going for glory against First Division Featherstone. Another all Yorkshire occasion. After one today, which Leeds fans and Graham Steadman will long remember for very different reasons. Good night. There's more sporting action tomorrow on YTV when at six, Calendar presents the weekend soccer highlights in gold. Castleford, fifth, against Warrington, third. Warrington have the reputation of being the meanest team in the league, so it was something of a surprise when Tuwera Nikau was allowed to go straight in from a play the ball. David Lyon had replied with a penalty, but Castleford made the next breakthrough, with question marks again being asked of the wide defence, as Grant Anderson found a gap which really shouldn't have existed, and Lee Crooks' conversion made it 10-2. Cash's third and last try of the half covered 40 yards with Dean Sampson making the decisive break before handing on for the willing Graham Southernwood to finish the job, just where Crooks wanted for his goal to make it 16-2. Warrington revived flagging hopes seven minutes before the break, Martin Crompton sending Kelly Shelford over and his turn enabled him to touch down. Lyon's second goal left the game reasonably poised at 16-8, but not for long. Castleford ripped into Warrington straight from the resumption. Graham Steadman naturally turning up to fall on Mike Ford's grubber kick for his 30th try of the season. A kick of a more mountainous nature from Lee Crooks eased Castleford into a winning margin. And now for one of those contentious tries that leave us all baffled. Players aren't supposed to steal the ball these days, but as Gary Mercer tries to hold off the tacklers, he seems to slip the perfect back pass to Richard Blackmore, who simply turns round and canters almost unopposed to further dent Warrington pride. Having conceded 29 points just down the road at Featherston in midweek, Warrington were now on the end of another drubbing and were again caught out down the middle for Southernwood to poach his second try of a productive afternoon. Crooks kept piling on the goals and Cass rounded off a highly impressive performance with wingman David Nelson showing his power and growing confidence, holding off one challenge after another on his way to the line. Crooks took his personal tally to six goals and Cass strengthened their championship claims by 40 points to eight. Bring on St Helens next week. The only first division hat-trick came from...